Knowledge becomes power only when we put it into use. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. And for today, we will be learning Human Digestive System. The Human Digestive System is very complex and has evolved millions of years. It basically consists of the rectum, the large intestine, the small intestine, and the pancreas, the stomach, also called gaster and ventriculus and the liver with the gallbladder. The esophagus is also part of the system, as well as the various salivary glands near the mouth. First, the food is broken up in the mouth by the teeth and then mixed with the saliva with the help of the salivary glands. Saliva contains a digestive enzyme called amylase that already begins to digest carbohydrates. In the mouth, it splits carbohydrates into smaller units. The ball-like mixture of food with saliva, also known as bolus, is pushed into the throat by the tongue and finally into the esophagus which propels the bolus to the stomach. The esophageal lumen, that is the opening inside the esophagus, is very flexible, which allows boluses of different sizes to be transported. The esophagus consists of several layers. These layers occur throughout the interdigestive tract. The two outer muscle layers are responsible for peristalsis. Through these two muscles, the bolus can be transmitted from the mouth to the stomach, even if the person is standing on his head. The stomach is often divided into six areas. The stomach is composed of a similar structure to the esophagus. It has a longitudinal muscle layer on the outside. Underneath, we can find circular muscle fibers. And in addition to this, there is an oblique muscle layer overlaying the mucosa. On the inside, there are rugae that allow the stomach to enlarge when food is consumed. The stomach wall contains gastric glands. They produce mucus which is able to protect the stomach wall from the secreted gastric acid. Gastric acid is produced by simply smelling or seeing food, but also spices and the stretching of the stomach causes the secretion. That is the release of gastric acid. About 1 to 2 liters of gastric juice are produced per day. Since the esophagus does not have a protective mucus layer, like the stomach and esophagus, are separated by a sphincter. It relaxes when a bolus is pushed from the esophagus into the stomach and then contracts to prevent acid and food from going back up. Gastric juice consists, among other things, of hydrochloric acid, the enzyme pepsin, the intrinsic factor, and lipase for the digestion of fats. In addition to nutrients, food also contains bacteria that can damage the body. The components of hydrochloric acid will to destroy harmful bacteria. In addition, hydraulic acid converts Pepsinogen also released by the gastric glands into pepsin. Pepsin is able to break down proteins into the stomach. For a vitamin B12 absorption in small intestine, the intrinsic factor is needed 
which is produced by the gastric glands. The vitamin must combine with intrinsic factor, then it can be absorbed later by the small intestine. Vitamin B12 helps keep body's nerve and blood cells healthy and helps make DNA. It also contains gastric lipase and acid-resistant enzyme for fat digestion. In the stomach, gastric lipase splits a triglyceride into a free fatty acid and a diglyceride whereby only the free fatty acid can be absorbed by the body. More effective fat digestion takes place in the small intestine. Through gastric juice and stomach movements, which takes place approximately every 20 seconds, the individual boluses are mixed to a semi-fluid mass of partly digested food, the so-called chyme. The chyme cannot enter the duodenum at first because there is a sphincter at the stomach exit. The phylonic sphincter resembles the esophageal sphincter. The phylonic sphincter opens only a few millimeters so that larger pieces remain inside the stomach. In the first section of the small intestine, the duodenum bile and pancreatic secretions are mixed with the chyme via the ampulla of Vader. Pancreatic juice contains numerous digestive proenzymes enzymes. in order for this to do their job. A higher pH value than that in the stomach is necessary. For this reason, pancreatic juice contains sodium hydrogen carbonate. Hydrogen carbonate is able to neutralize the acid in the chyme and thus produce the optimum pH value of 7 or 8. Pancreatic juice also contains proenzymes. It is also through enterokinase released by the duodenum wall that the proenzyme trypsinogen and becomes trypsin, which can split proteins and activate other trypsinogens. We also find alpha amylase, which we had already found in the mouth. It now does the rest regarding the splitting of carbohydrates, which it converts into maltose and acemaltose. Furthermore, pancreatic lipase is able to split triglycerides into two free fatty acids. The gastric lipase, as we have seen before, can produce only one free fatty acid. The pancreatic lipase can cleave triglycerides excellently because the bile breaks the fats down into the droplets. This is called emulsification. Numerous other enzymes are part of pancreatic juice, but this will not be explained in detail here. Bile is produced by the liver cells and transported to the gallbladder. The bile is stored in the gallbladder and finally added to the food in the duodenum via the ampulla of Vader. On the pancreas also releases juice via the ampulla of Vater. The small intestine consists of three sections, duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. The ileum continues into the large intestine in the right lower abdomen. The duodenum and the jejunum have circular folds to increase the contact surface with the food. These circular folds extend about 1 cm into the lumen of the small intestine. These folds are covered with small finger-like projections called villi. Villi increase the surface considerably. Villi are about 1 mm long. Each villus contains blood capillaries and a lymphatic capillary called lacteal, which we will see later. The nutrients marked green here 
are absorbed by the villus and transferred to the blood capillaries. Some nutrients such as glucose do not require a carrier. They are transported freely in the bloodstream. Other nutrients such as iron require transport proteins like transferrin. Fats are transported by the chylomicrons which are lipoproteins. The triglycerides to be transported are virtually enclosed in the lipoprotein. Chylomicrons and triglycerides are then transported through the lactyl of the villus. Each villus is covered by even smaller microvilli. They multiply the intestinal surface considerably. The microvilli absorb nutrients and transport them to the inside. The last part of the small intestine is the ileum. It does not have, unlike the duodenum and duodenum, with circular folds. The ileum absorbs electrolytes such as calcium for building bones, hair, and teeth. Trace elements such as zinc for sperm production and the immune system. Vitamins such as B12 for the formation and maturation of red blood cells and remaining bile acid which is transported back to the liver via the bloodstream. As with the esophagus, the food is transported by peristalsis. In contrast, segmentation contractions serve to mix the chyme, which is shown here in yellow and red to make it easier to see the mixing process. The large intestine is thicker than the small intestine. It is about 1 meter long and surrounds the small intestine. The small intestine is connected to the large intestine via the bowel's valve. It opens when chyme is to pass from the small intestine to the large intestine. The large intestine does not valve any villi like the small intestine because most digestible substances have been absorbed in the smaller intestine. However, the large intestine has an estimated 100 billion bacteria inside. They are important for many other tasks such as the production of vitamins and the decomposition of fiber for the body's energy production. Many of these bacteria are an important part of the immune system by killing harmful germs. Through peristalsis, the chyme is transported from the ascending colon to the transverse colon. To the descending colon. On its way through the large intestine water is removed from the thyme. Furthermore, mucus is added for proper excretion of waste. Substances cannot be absorbed through the small intestine or the large intestine remain in the rectum and are finally excreted through the anus. So, to all Kamiske, hope you learned something with my class today. See you in my next video class and don't forget to like, share and subscribe all to my channel, Krisha Malampago, at your service. Bye-bye!